My name is Paolo, I'm lead technical writer at Monite, and today I'll be speaking on behalf of our documentation team in the session. Uh, in the session, I will showcase the Monite API developer portal and some of the interesting initiatives we led to provide a great developer experience to our users. Before uh, we really start here, let's talk a little bit about our agenda of this uh, this presentation here. So first, we're going to talk about Monite itself. Uh, we're going to establish some background information about Monite and our API. Then we're going to talk about our developer portal mission. We're going to talk about how our mission matches with a good developer experience and the main objective of our dev portal. Then we're going to talk about developer experience. And we will here highlight some of the features that we provide to make this great developer experience happen. Uh, to finish, we're going to have some short demos where we will show about how our features work and how they can help in real time, in real life use cases. So again, we're going to have a demo for our API Explorer showing how to set the first API calls. And then we're going to have a quick demo about our AI search. And to finish, we're going to have some minutes dedicated to Q&A, all right? OK, so first about Monite, right? So we are a, an early stage startup. And as Laura mentioned, we are an API platform for embedded finance that allows any other apps to embed some of our financial solutions into their apps to make them some sort of like super apps, super financial apps. So this way they can include accounts payable, accounts receivable, and payments capabilities into their products. We claim that we can go live with two developers in four weeks, right? And this item here uh, reinforces the need for a self-service experience in our dev portal. And on top of the uh, no only uh, API only integration, we also offer drop in web components, React UI SDK, and JavaScript SDK. Uh, about the team, a little about a little bit about the team that uh, pushes the portal to achieve our goals. Uh, we use a robust content manager system, right? A CMS that is exclusively ta tailored for developer documentation. So it allow us to organize, update, and publish the content very efficiently. We uh, are a sort of a multidisciplinary team, of course, because our developer portal consists of basically three technical writers, but also includes developers, UX designers, product managers, and so on. So this way we can count on the expertise of each one of the roles of the company. It's super necessary for the, uh, you know, developer experience character of the portal. And uh, also the team uh, strives for a writing and feedback culture. So we are actively engaged in subject matter experts to hear what they, what they have to say, uh, not only within our organization, but also we have some external developers contributing to feedback so we can just enhance our documentation. And additionally, we have many other channels in our docs to get some insights and suggestions from uh, di different types of users. All right, uh, so we're going to talk a bit about our developer portal mission and uh, why do our developer portal exist? So uh, we can just say here uh, we have these main principles that guide our developer portal, right? They are the basis of all the developer experience we provide. So starting from the first, we believe in transparency. Uh, it means that all our documentation is open and accessible to everyone. You just go to the URL and access our documentation. Also, our SDKs and API guidelines are open source. It means that you can just go to our repository, our public repository, get the code of the SDKs, learn how uh, the standards of our API works, and get more used to the way that we build all our API. Third point here, everyone can register and obtain API keys at any time with ease. So, you know, we don't restrict the ones who want to try and 
uh, experiment our API here. So you just go to the portal, get your credentials, and you start doing your first API calls very easily, no friction. And finally, our API is documented using the open API specification in order to meet the industry standards. All right, now let's deep dive into the developer experience that is the main uh, subject here in our presentation, right? So uh, in Monite's case, we already, as I mentioned, we use a CMS tool provider that provides a lot of features that can help us to achieve the best developer experience as we can. So in this case, we use the maximum of the features that our SCMS provider offers. And we make sure that we potentialize our content for those features to work well, and we customize them at the same time for our audience's needs. So here there are the main features we provide to strive for the best developer experience. The first, I would say it's a self-service experience, just like as I mentioned, right? So we are this comprehensive resource designed for developers uh, to have a self-service experience from end to end during the use of our uh, product. We also provide extensive documentation, which includes, you know, code samples, API guides, tutorials, uh, whatever, a lot of different kinds of documentation to cover all the aspects of our product. We also have the support ecosystem uh, where we feature developer forums. We have diff uh, direct channels for carrying uh, issues, pollings and everything uh, together with the developers. We also provide tutorial videos for different types of audiences who are more focused on visual e items. We also provide a Postman collection for additional support on implementing and testing the API. And finally, we offer a sandbox environment for interactive real-time API testing. And uh, we provide also an AI search for a humanized communication and assistance when you need some information from our portal. So in our case here, let's concentrate more on the last two items, all right? So I will demonstrate very uh, briefly how these features work in two short demos and how we can get the best usage of these features in a real use case in a real life here. So first of all, let's start with our API Explorer, right? Uh, I know that it's, it's, it's pretty common to have API Explorers in dev portals uh, and you can just test the API in real time uh, but I, I would say here that all our content is designed to fit this approach of api explorer uh, starting by our descriptions with cross uh, linking between the guides and the api reference uh, the way that we describe the attributes and the way that we prepare our open api file to be imported directly in the tool, you know? So uh, we just prepare all the files that we have to make sure we explore this feature at most. So with our API Explorer, you can directly interact with our API in real time, right? And with this, we gain speed, convenience, and efficiency. So uh, our demo here, um, I will show in a couple of minutes how to run the first API calls in the Monite system in a very easy way without the need of any other tool, all inside our dev portal and our API Explorer, right? So we're gonna use here a very basic use case that is how to subscribe to a webhook, how to create a webhook. As you may know, a webhook is a way to get notified about changes in an API system. So we're gonna uh, establish here our first, uh, you know, from end to end experience, getting the credentials and running the first API calls. All right, so let's first jump in here in the Monite portal. And let's go. It seems that the page is not changing. Okay. All right. So let's go here through guides. 
And in the guides, we can just find our get started session. In our get started session, we have get your credentials, right? It's just, just step one. It's from where we start. As you can see here, we have four steps, but it, everything starts from register a partner account. And we do this in our Onide partner portal. Jumping very quickly here in the Monite partner portal, just to make sure uh, you're going to jump into this screen. You have to register yourself. In this case, I'm already registered, but if not, just register, get your, uh, your password and your validation via email, no friction. And as soon as you are here, you can create a new project, which I'm going to call Monite. that already exists, Monite2. And there we go, Monite2 is our project. You can get your API credentials. So just add a credential and there we go. We have here our client ID and our client secret, all that you need to get the token, the access token that we need to perform the API calls. So just let's get back here. We can just, you know, jump directly into the API Explorer. That's our demo here, where we're gonna show how to do everything from inside the API Explorer. So first of all, we let's get our token. We can just go to general, access tokens and create a token. So we have here, all the information that we need to run the first call, how to get a token. We can get the ID. We can get the client secret. I just set here the version and run. As you can see, this is directly connected to our sandbox. So it's a real test. And as a response, you can see that we already have our token here. All right, with this token, we can run some uh, other API calls here, which I'm gonna choose webhooks settings, right? Just like we are mentioned, this use case here is to create a new webhook. So there we go. In this case here, let's create a webhook to monitor uh, the changes in counterparts. What is a counterpart? A counterpart, it's a third part where you can buy or sell products and services. In other words, is the company that you do business with, right? So a select here that I want to monitor this type of object. I introduce here the address of my endpoint of my webhook and select the version of the API and try it. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot to add the token here. So I just paste in here the token that we just obtained. And there it is, right? We got a positive answer with our webhook already created, right? If I want to double check the webhooks that are already created, we can go to get all webhook subscriptions, select the version, and again, run the API. I can see here the register that I just created, all right? So as you can see, you can execute all the calls that we have here only by having your credentials get your token and then you can run all the other calls all right okay great so uh this is how our api explorer work uh and now we're gonna talk about our ai search right so uh this is a trend feature that we contributed with feedback during the initial test phases of our cms provider so 
we had the opportunity to have the beta and to be one of the first ones to test it, to see how it works, to provide feedback, and to polish the tool that now is just getting out of the beta version into the final version. So uh, this AI-powered search provides, as you can see, instant assistance and support, and they understand natural and humanized language uh, and queries. They understand it and provide customized answer based on your uh, prompts, all right? So in this case here, let's suppose that we want, again, to be notified about the creation of counterparts in the Monite system. And for this, we're going to ask some questions to our AI and see if, you know, how their, uh, their answer lead us to what we really want. So let's start with some really basic questions. So let's get back to our landing page. And here we have our uh, AI input. So let's start with the basic question. So how can I be notified about changes in the Monite system? Humanize the language. And then we're going to have the answer from the AI. As you can see, you can, you can subscribe to real-time notifications uh, of specific events using webhooks. So they just provide here, the AI just provide the four steps that are necessary to create some webhooks and also uh, offer some uh, hints of pages that you can double check. Let's just in case check the webhooks page, right? Here we have the webhooks page where you can find some tutorial video that explains in details how to set up webhooks uh, for different type of audience. And also I have here, just like the answer from AI, we have all the steps necessary, but let's stick to the API, uh, to, to the AI, right? So the first, the first step would be identify the events you want to monitor. Right here, I have a list of events that I want to monitor, that I can monitor, right? But I want to ask this to the AI uh, to see what they answer me. Uh, so I can ask them uh, what events Let's see what they say. Okay, it's taking a lot of time. <laughs> we must be gentle to the AI. So in the future, if they rule the world, they will remember that. All right, but uh, let's just stick to the, the, the first question and the four steps, right, that they provided us. So the first one, if I want to ask, right, so there we go. Uh, Monai triggers notifications for the following objects and events. This object and this event. So with this, we can already consider the first step, right? And then the second step would be create a webhook endpoint in your local system. So to receive notifications, I have to create this webhook in my local system, all right? So how this webhook should look like? Let's ask the, the AI, right? So how the end webhook endpoint in my local system to monitor the creation of counterparts, that's the event that we want to monitor, should look like. So we are asking the AI how this endpoint should look like. Now we got the answer, right? The monitor to create counterparts. Uh, the webhook endpoint should be set up to handle post requests. Expect a JSON payload. And here's the structure that it should expect, right? 
And here it determines that you should monitor the object counterpart and the action will be created. So as you can see, I asked a customized prompt because I want to monitor this event, a counterpart creation. And you can see that the code snippet provided to me was also customized. All right. And uh, finally, the third step here would be to add the webhook to the settings. So I can also ask the UI how to do it, how to add a webhook to monitor counterparts creation to our settings. So how to add this webhooks to our settings, right? I already created my local system, so how can I add it to the settings? So to add a webhook to monitor a counterpart's creation, you need to make a post request to the webhooks settings endpoint. And here you have a code sample that you should run to get uh, notified about the counterparts. As you can see again, customized code snippet for counterparts, right? And then um, you have all the code snippets necessary to set up a webhook in your system, right? I'm showing here how to do it via our API Explorer, no external tools, and also via code with humanized language. All right, so that's all. Uh, I would like to express my gratitude to the audience, to your time, your, uh, your attention to the, the colleagues who joined the session, uh, to my uh, co-workers that all of this is only possible with their help. And that's it. Uh, let's have some Q&A. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paolo. And um, congratulations for the whole team. Wow. Thank you. Um, there is um, one question I have seen in the Q&A too. Um, do you use retrieval augmented generation for the AI tool? And congratulations for the innovation. Thank you very much. Uh, we count on, I mean, the the feature, the AI feature is sponsored by our CMS provider. So we are not very aware about the engine that it uses, but I would say yes. It's, uh, it, it's a feature that learns inside our own documentation. You know, mm -hmm. so the first prompts that we tried, they were not so good. They just brought some non-precise questions. But uh, the more you start prompting, you start asking questions and it starts to read your docs. It starts, you know, the, the answers, they start to get more precise. Mm -hmm. Did you meet like a character limit in what um, you question you put in search and like issues with typos? Uh, no, we, we don't have a limit, uh, neither from, for, for character uh, limitation nor for number of, uh, of calls or no, number of, of prompts. So uh, we, we basically don't have these limitations, but we have this subjective limitations when you start to push a lot of content and the machine starts to slow down, you know, when they get a lot of inputs. But in general, no restrictions for, you know, characters or anything like that. Mm -hmm. The question came up again, what CMS do you use? And uh, you already answered that you use README. Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. um, since you started testing um, this um, AI tool for, uh, for searching in, in the, the documentation, did you change parts of the docs? Because you see that that would play better with um, how an AI looks for things. Did anything change as... Um, Actually, because of this. yes, I mean, um, uh, I believe that we're going to have a lot of AI search providers for CMSs of all types, but what can make a difference is how you dispose your content, how you present your content and how you organize them to, uh, to, 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 to empower the search engines. You know, I, I think that the way that you organize your, your docs, it's, it's super important. So uh, we started kind of checking the first answers that they provide, st started to understand how they operate, the AI operates in order to, to 
understand what what kind of information helps AI the most to get to the the, the answer that we really want. Mm -hmm. So the answer would be yes. We made some changes to adapt ourselves not only to the AI search but also to the API Explorer as well. Mm -hmm. um, what would you do do differently if you were starting to build the documentation from scratch now? Uh, well, actually, this documentation was built from scratch uh, when we joined. So this all this content is a, a huge effort for uh, of on, only one year and a half uh -huh. of, of a very small and modest team. So I have to say that I wouldn't do much different. Uh, I would potentially look for something that fits our current needs. So we choose README because we already had this content, uh, you know, and we wanted to push this live as fast as possible. So it was a great solution for us at that time, just to make sure that we have, uh, you know, a decent dev portal up and running in a very short time. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it's difficult to say that I would do something different because we always take the decision considering the time that we are living, uh, but, yeah, I would say that we are pretty comfortable with the decisions that we took. Mm -hmm. um, allow me one more tough question. Um, mm -hmm. What's the known unknowns at this point for you as a, um, as a technical writer? You mean the, 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 the biggest challenges are the things that we don't oh, know? Oh, challenges, but the things to which you don't know the answer or more like the gnarly problems? You know, but you you don't touch it just yet. It is because it's premature to try to find a solution, or because it's too uh, complex. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a great question, and actually somehow connects to the first question, uh, the the previous question that you just threw. Uh, I, I would say that having a full automation of the docs process. It's something that it's still a bit complex for us. It's something that we are at a very initial phase of wondering how we can do it, especially if you are using some CMS too. It's a bit difficult sometimes to integrate it with your code, with your live code and do some docs as code stuff. So this is something that maybe I, I could have done since the beginning, you know, to start to build something that is more docs as code friendly. Um, and definitely nowadays, as we just developed a lot of content and now we have to deal with, the, with, with that content, with that amount of content, I would say that having some automation now would be something really beneficial for us. And it's something that, uh, honestly, we didn't start looking uh, really because it's it's something that scares a little bit, mm -hmm. scares us a little bit. Um, on that note, um, if you could give a, a quick summary on the tool chain. So how do you keep technical documentation up to date? Uh, what are your methods for monitoring and updating information? And if you could connect to... Do you manage content in GitHub or do you write directly in README? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a great question. I believe that there are two uh, forms to keep the code up to date and to make sure that our documentation reflects the reality. One of them is through uh, a, a docs process, right? I mean, you have automation of the docs, you have uh, your docs reading the code repository where they just can uh, output some open API file automatically. They can output some uh, guide automatically right from the, the code repository. And uh, the way that we do currently, that is to monitor via processes, like team processes, right? So we have a def, uh, the uh, documentation team that we keep on monitoring and watching what's happening inside all the dev teams just to make sure that we can cover those changes that they are doing to the features and to make sure that we deliver the code at the same time as they do with, uh, we deliver the docs at the same time as they deliver with the code. So we have some sort of uh, docs, manual docs as code, if I can say that. We monitor manually participating in the tools, in, in the rituals, uh, but we don't have this automation via repository tools that push automatically uh, content and so on. 
-hmm. So yeah, we make sure we are always up to date, but in a more like manual and, and rough way. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, there's a question about uh, beginners and seasoned developers and what you just started talking about opens a can of questions. So, uh, Paolo, can you stay for um, after the uh, next two presentations to talk directly with uh, the participants about uh, what they want to know? Absolutely. As, absolutely. As soon as the colleagues finish their presentations, let's just, you know, stay all together and we can, we can discuss everything. All right. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very um, much. It was, was a pleasure. Riveting. Uh, and thank you for uh, volunteering to show us with a live demo. Thank you very much.